All right, now resistance was, African people did resist, okay? This whole process, okay? And of course, the most famous resistance happened in Haiti, okay? Um, I, you know, at the time, 70, 70, 774,000 um, people were brought to Haiti. It, like I said, it was the jewel of the French crown. It produced half of the world sugar at the time. Okay, right, so in August, on August 14th, um, 1791, Toussaint Louverture, he launched, launched a military insurrection to overthrow the French out of Carpathian, okay, a village close to Carpathian, about a couple of miles out of, outside Carpathian is to the north of Haiti. It took them two years, but eventually they were, the French were forced to abandon the island, okay, they subsequently returned and captured uh, Tusa and imprisoned him and he eventually died in prison. Okay, sure. now that was... Huh? According, according to one version of history, there was some infighting within the group and we yeah. got it like Tusa and they captured him and gave him to the French. At the end of the day, he was captured and taken as a prisoner. Okay? Yeah. But the problem right. is... Like everything else, everybody wanted to be the boss, and that was the problem. Yeah. Uh, Kali, do you want to speak on that question? Because the same thing happened with I, you. I, 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 I think South America. I think I think you got to keep in mind that's what that's one version. I was saying because, a version. A version. That's right. Because the the version that is most most reported. Is that Tusim was invited to um, because they, they they had the French defeated, right? And the French the French um, still had interest in Haiti, of course, and they wanted to make a deal, right? And and Tusim was invited to um, to hold a, a, a not a discussion but but an agreement or to reach an agreement um, with Napoleon's envoy. And it was actually a ruse by which they then captured Toussaint, who was already on the ship, and took him back yeah. to France. Yeah. Now, um, that is what taught the Desalines, who became Toussaint's successor, yeah. made that a lesson for himself. Yeah. That when the French then came to speak to Desalines, he said that you will get no further or no closer to me than the end or the tip of my sword. Because well, of what he did. Yeah. So right. so Tussin wasn't, Tussin wasn't really betrayed by his people as much as Tussin was, was, was stripped by Napoleon into capture because they couldn't get yeah. him otherwise. Yeah, so let me speak, let me speak to, to, to that, okay? It's a good introduction to, to, to Tussin, right-hand man, basically, and principal lieutenant and his successor, Jacques Desailles, okay? Who, after um, Tussin, led the revolution, okay? He defeated the French army when they came back um, in 1803 and declared Haiti independence in 1804, okay? Um, and this was controversial and uh, at the time, he ordered that every French person in Haiti to be executed, okay? What a lot of people also do not know about the Haiti revolution is that they were able to, um, overthrow the Spanish in the Dominican Republic American part Republic. of the island. You see? Right. So all of it came, it was independence. Yeah. However, wanna... the... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Go, uh, go ahead, tell I me. need to interrupt you. No, right, no, no, okay. go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, this is also that Desalines ordering the French to be put to death should not be interpreted as Desalines waging war against whites. Because while he, was, while he ordered the French to be put to death, there, were a, there was a sizable Polish community in Haiti who were allowed to yeah. live there because yeah. um, the Poles were at war with, um, with France and some other countries as well. And, 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 and so, you know, that, um, the Poles settled in, Germ in Haiti, I believe some Germans did as well. But so yeah. his thing was the French were the enemy, not white yeah. people. Were the enemy. And I think that yeah. needs to be emphasized. 
Yeah, very, very important point because there was, you know, the, the Polish people also were involved, you know, in supporting the, the revolution as well. So in, in any case, the Haitian revolution is by far the most successful uprising against the whole slavery system. Okay? It panicked slaveholders up and down the Caribbean and in the United States. Okay, your president, Thomas Jefferson, okay, was one of those people who was, you know, firmly anti-revolution, right? You know, at that time. Okay, and in support of France. All right? Um, and it was an inspiration for other revolts, like I said, up and down the Caribbean and Latin and South America and the US. Okay, some other resistance movements. Okay, we had the Maroons in Jamaica. Yes, Radford. Can I make a statement? You just mentioned uh, Jefferson. Uh -huh. I, was re I, was re I was reading something today about black mathematicians. In 1792, this is what Jefferson said. The third US president, Thomas Jefferson in 1792, when he was secretary of state said the following, comparing them by the faculties of memory, reason and imagination, it appears to me that in memory, the Negro are equal to the whites. In reason, much inferior as I think one could scarcely be found capable of tracing and comprehending the investigations of Euclid and that in imagination, they are dull, tasteless and anomalous. Okay? Yeah. So this was, this was Thomas so Jefferson. Same, same Jefferson. Yeah. Um, again, another white supremacy view. Okay. All right. So let me try to wrap this up or bring it home. All right. So um, we had the Maroons in Jamaica who ran away, um, ran away enslaved Africans, you know, who went into the interior. Okay. There, um, you know, there are several wars actually between themselves and the British. Eventually they ended up cooperating, but it's a long story. Okay. You had coffee in, 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 in Guyana down in Essequibo. Um, down by the quarantine area there, who, who, who led a rebel rebellion. This here, you know, um, is a statue of coffee um, in comm commemoration of the 1763, down by the um, National Park, down by the Botanic Gardens, I should say, down on Bliss Indian Road in, um, in, in Georgetown. Then you had Daga in Trinidad, Okay, you're probably familiar with Dagger Hall. Dennis, you, you, you know Dagger Hall on UE campus? Yeah, man, just opposite admin building. No, no, Remember? But, okay, but that hall I thought was some Macandal Dagger. I didn't no, think no, 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 no. Macandal Dagger took his name from this dagger. <laughs> you see what so, I'm saying? So, <laughs> right? so tell me more about this dagger because I. I am one okay. Of <laughs> so this dagger, okay, in 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 1834, all right, was uh, was in on the African continent, okay. Um, he was Europe. He, he is to Europa, okay, and he was a slave trader, in that he captured people and so on, all right, and he was encouraged to come on the ship, okay. Um, for the Port by the Portuguese, all right? And he and his men, whilst on the ship, were captured, all right? And, um, you know, enslaved by the Portuguese. Now, they say at that time, um, the British had um, banned the slave trade, okay? And were actively patrolling and interdicting, you know, foreign vessels carrying, you know, enslaved people. And they picked up the Portuguese ship and brought their enslaved African people over to Trinidad. Okay, now at that time it is said that Daga made a commitment to his people, okay, that he will get them back home. Okay, now when they arrived in Trinidad, he was basically conscripted into the British Army at that time, okay. And of course, it was very regimented and it was pretty much tanked them out to, um, you know, an enslavement process, okay? Again, unfamiliar with the food and, the, and so on, okay? So he ended up in St. Joseph, 
Right? You, you, you know where the playground is in St. Joseph? Right? Up on the hill, past the cemetery. Okay, that general area. All right? And, um, you know, being in that condition for a number of years, all right, he led uh, an insurrection or mutiny, I suppose. All right? Um, in 1837, all right? Um, to get his people out of that situation and return to Guinea, which is where they are, they, they are from. That uh, revolt was quelled, okay? And Daga, along with um, his followers, were executed. Question, right? yeah, question mm. Why did this happen in 1837 if slavery was abolished in 1834? But this is the point, you know, he wasn't taken as, you know, in the slavery, in the British slave, slavery process, which was which was winding down, okay, but he was put in the army, right? Which was basically tanks amounting to the same thing. They were not free to leave, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, it was very regimented the whole story, okay, and oppressive in in, in many ways, okay. So so that is what happened. In the context of Trinidad history, interesting. I, I think I think I think what what what, what is trying to is, the point Dennis is trying to make, which is a valid point, is that if if you're gonna link, um, if we talk about slave revolts in 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 actuality, it, it wouldn't qualify to be one, since it was outside the period of slavery. Is that right, Dennison? Well, yeah, I am confused about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this, this is actually um, would, would would be more in the in the, in the um, uh, an uprising in, in uh, on the same level, I guess, as Paul Bogle, I think it was. Who um, it was in after Jamaica? slavery, right? After mm -hmm. slavery, but still, still, still. Um, as, as, right? as you, so I would, as you would see in a minute, as you would see, as you would see in a minute, we are the tail end of of the slave process, but it hasn't really, it didn't really end, you know. It went on for some years afterwards. Okay, yeah, so I was like thinking that, that maybe that's a, when yeah, that's they, another issue. Yeah. the British um, abolished yeah. slavery in 1830 something, yeah. 31 or 34. Yeah. Um, yeah. It took a while before it actually got implemented because even in in the US, it went on for another 30 years before they. Yeah. Was actually, uh, there, there was a 10 year what do you call it? A, um, apprenticeship. Apprenticeship. A 10 year apprenticeship. So although although. They were they were legally, although it was legally abolished, they were still tied to to, to servitude for an additional right. ten years. Well, okay, I, I okay. thought that the apprenticeship system yeah, was, was four, years. four years. We will talk we will talk about that in, in the next yeah. slide. Okay? okay. Okay. Right. Um. Yes. Yeah. So, in terms of resistance as well, we always use you know, uh, religious and cultural um, things as expression of that resistance. Okay. Um, case in point, you know, uh, capoeira in Brazil, which is a martial art, really developed during the whole slavery process, you know, that came with the European slaves who ended up in, 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 in Brazil. Yoruba, sorry, not Yoruba, uh, voodoo, okay, was a religion that came out of the whole West African context, okay, that sort of united everybody from Semi-Gambia right down to Angola. And that is one of the reasons why, you know, um, Tusa and others, okay, were able to bring people together and struggle, all right? You know, later on our whole carnival process, you know, Calypso and Mass and so on, were presented as, um, as things which ridiculed, you know, the white plantation owners. Okay, so it was always there, it was always present in people's hearts and minds. All right, moving right along. So abolition, 